Hello everyone, I'm Bailey Martin and welcome to Praxis Magazine. When the Fern Hollow Bridge came crashing down last month, it could be heard by many people who lived in the Squirrel Hill and Regent Square community. But the collapse also made some noise on a national level. The Biden administration is using the bridge failure as an example of the need to fix our crumbling infrastructure. As crews continue to clean up and investigate what led the bridge to cave in, we found business owners and Duquesne students deeply affected by the collapse. First responders worked quickly to bring 10 injured people out of the ravine after the Fern Hollow Bridge collapsed on January 28th. Remarkably, no one suffered life-threatening injuries. PennDOT officials say 14,000 drivers used the Fern Hollow Bridge every day before it came crumbling to the ground. The popular section of Forbes Avenue is an important connector, linking neighborhoods. With it now shut down indefinitely, business owners worry about the impact on customers and revenue. Well, I think right now it's, you know, being a slow time for me anyway, January and February, it's hard to, to judge. But I know that a lot of people, a lot of my customers have, um, you know, that live in the neighborhood have had a hard time getting to the store. As you can see, I am just feet away from the destruction site that was the collapse of the Fern Hollow Bridge here in Frick Park. We looked at how it is directly affecting those local to the city and even Duquesne students. Kathleen Herbstritt moved to South Braddock Avenue right next to Frick Park just weeks before the bridge collapsed. I woke up to sirens first thing in the morning. Um, I could hear them from our apartment. Um, I got several texts from family members and friends like, letting me know what was going on, asking if we were okay. Kathleen's a senior English and women and gender studies major and tells me it was an easy commute taking Forbes Avenue all the way to Duquesne's campus. Not anymore. Kathleen, David, and many other people living in the area are hoping the infrastructure law signed by President Joe Biden and the president's visit to the site of the collapse will enhance the Fern Hollow Bridge and many others in need of repair. We are worried there are a few other bridges in the area that do need some construction and renovations done. So we hope that the city will be mindful of caring for infrastructure in the future. Transportation officials do not know how long it will take to rebuild the Fern Hollow Bridge. There are estimates by PennDOT officials that it could take at least 18 months or possibly more than two years. The coronavirus pandemic has claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans, tearing families apart and leaving economic hardships on so many throughout the country. As health experts continue to urge people to get vaccinated to protect their families, there's work being done right now on campus to keep people safe in creative ways. Two students involved with Duquesne University's Partnership in Education created a COVID-themed board game using a concept called Serious Gaming. This is a concept that our liberal arts department is familiar with and is the subject of this Praxis Magazine report. These Duquesne graduate students are on a roll. And they came to play, specifically the board game that they created. Partnership in Education students Brinley Kantorski and Sarah Will created You Make Me Sick, a board game with the goal of inspiring to do just the opposite of the game's title. Originally designed in 2009, Kantorski and Will picked up the game's design to create infectious fun in a new era. Originally, the infectious diseases that were in the game were things like chickenpox or measles or ear infections, um, diseases that kids are going to encounter in their everyday life. And we just went ahead and um, added information about COVID-19 now because it is a part of our everyday life and everyone unfortunately has to experience it or at least the effects of it um, pretty much every day. Although COVID-19 is nothing to play around with, the spread of information through fun is no new concept. In fact, Dr. Zainab Tennis Ely, an associate professor in Duquesne's media department, has been studying games since she was in college and has even received her master's and PhD on educational gaming. She has been teaching Advergaming in her interactive media marketing course open to all students. 
you learn about how to think outside the box and convey a message uh, through non-traditional uh, media advertising. And advert gaming is one of the ways that we can convey a message. Dr. Tennessee says that being actively involved and our brain's need for consistency is what makes gaming an effective form of spreading information. And Brinley and Sarah's award-winning game does just that. Uh, in other words, so when you say someone uh, wearing a mask helps, um, helps stop spread of this virus, right? And you can say, yeah, yeah, sure, I got it, right? <laughs> so I know, whatever. But what this trivial true or false question does is it makes the person say it. So rather than just okay. rolling their eyes and so say, yeah, yeah, I know, they're so actually saying it, and by saying it out loud, they get rewarded for it. spread of COVID-19 to others. True. And that Dr. Z's interactive media marketing course is open to students of all majors. And a free download of You Make Me Sick can be found on the Partnership in Education's website for those who are interested in learning more about Sirius and Adver Gaming. His new book has been called A Twisty, Fulfilling Legal Thriller, taking readers through an emotional journey through Pittsburgh. That's how critics have been describing President Ken Gormley's first novel, The Heiress of Pittsburgh. President Gormley calls his book a love letter to Pittsburgh. Gormley is a two-time New York Times best-selling author for his nonfiction works and says this first novel is 30 years in the making. The book is centered around a Pittsburgh lawyer, his love for the city of Pittsburgh, and the character's intense court battle on behalf of the blue-collar communities of Swissvale and Edgewood, where Gormley was raised. The story is filled with rich details of the Pittsburgh region and, as President Gormley is promoting his work here on Duquesne's campus, he had a few of his Pittsburgh friends join him for the special event. The celebration had all the Pittsburgh fixings, including Permani Sal sandwiches, a cookie table, and even pierogies. The President's love of writing and the book's potential impact on Pittsburgh are important elements of this Praxis Magazine report. For me, writing, especially writing fiction, creative writing of any kind, is as enjoyable as going to a movie. It's, it's, you're creating the movie, you're, you're seeing the images. And so for me, I always say some people see shrieks, I write. It's great therapy, <laughs> stress release, it's just something I love doing. The Heiress of Pittsburgh is available on Amazon and in bookstores throughout the region. President Gormley says that all proceeds from the sales of this novel will be donated to a special initiative at Duquesne University in the College of Liberal Arts to support a new generation of young readers in developing their craft and pursuing their writing talents. If you like to stay caffeinated, this cafe provides the coffee, but for a good cause. Brother Andre's Cafe, located in Epiphany Church here in Uptown Pittsburgh, provides great service and great opportunities for adults with developmental disabilities. And as Praxis Magazine reporter Mary Flavin shows us, it's also providing a job opportunity to Duquesne student Shay Moffat. Inspired by the story of Brother Andre, the namesake of this cafe, Mike and Terry Fitzgerald opened a coffee shop in order to employ those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Twenty-year-old Javon Moffat has spent the past two weeks serving up more than just coffee. She has been learning vital skills in Duquesne University's St. Anthony's program. Favorite thing to do? I like to make coffee. coffee. You like to make coffee? Yeah. What's your favorite kind to make? With like oh. just, just regular uh, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. And you said you don't Shay and her mom have coffee making in the bag. It's it? fun being with you. It's fun being with you. Is this correct? Look. Made with love, each cup, bag, and treat is handled with care by employees like Shay. They aren't the only ones enjoying the coffee, however. Latte! <laughs> Brother Ross Henley orders up. Uh, it's been very warm and inviting. And I haven't tried the coffee yet, but I'm sure it's delicious. You could say that Brother Andres is brother delicious. tested, it's brother delicious. approved. Experiences provided by Brother Andres bruise opportunity and steep success. She's so proud of herself, which is, 
you know, know all these kids want is to have the same kind of experiences that other kids have, which is they want to feel useful and they want to feel needed and they want to do things that they've never done before. They like challenges. So this has been a great challenge for her. I'm Mary Liz Flavin with Praxis Magazine, and I hope to see you here at the Blue Doors of Brother Andre's Cafe. So if you want to grab a cup of coffee or if you're looking for a new study spot, Brother Andre's Cafe is located in the basement of Epiphany Church right across the street from the bluff and is open every day except Sunday, 7 to 4 p.m. My favorite, the cold brew. There's a growing outreach to at-risk children, not far from our campus, that's grabbing the attention of Duquesne students. Vagabond Missions employees are targeting inner city boys and girls to bring them into a closer relationship with God to transform their lives. Praxis Magazine reporter Ashley Platt shows us just how they're reaching young people in unique and dynamic ways, and how Duquesne University may be part of its future. Pittsburgh has a new mission in the Hill District, and its main focus is providing guidance, support, and safe spaces for teens living in inner city areas. Vagabond Missions is a Roman Catholic nonprofit whose outreach program works to help teens in inner cities cope with the many challenges our youth face today. We are a group of Catholic missionaries uh, that are seeking to break the cycle of hopelessness in the inner city by investing in the lives of inner city unchurched teenagers. Lauren Koth is a Hill District lead missionary, and as a staff member for Vagabond Missions, Lauren has a deep passion for helping others, especially our youth. I have the best job in the world. Um, I get to spend my day with these kids who are just incredible. You know, they, they dream bigger than any people I've ever met, and, and they're resilient. You can find Lauren running the after-school program, Breakout, at the Underground in the Hill District. Breakout is our biggest program that we have during the week. Uh, basically, we bring the kids, kids in, uh, and we have people who provide dinner for us, so we get a chance to share a meal with our teens. And then we have just the time to hang out, to play basketball, to play video games, and just catch up. For many of our kids, they come from from bo broken homes and in unstable situations. And so here, you know, when they're in the underground, they're loved consistently, you know, through the ups and the downs of their lives, like they're able to fall back onto these missionaries who, who love them unconditionally just like their Heavenly Father does. With Lauren and the other missionaries' help, Vagabond Mission seeks to introduce Jesus and a loving community to its teens through its outreach programs. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our, our kids grow spiritually through their involvement here at the underground. You know, they're, they're introduced to a relationship with Jesus. Um, but mostly I think they walk away with an experience of being loved. You know, they're, they're loved and invested in by our missionaries and, and through that they're able to encounter the love of God. Vagabond Missions is always looking for volunteers and they invite you to consider investing your time to help change the lives of our inner city youth. Come check it out because God is alive and moving in, in the most hidden parts and in the most unexpected places um, right here in, in our backyards in Pittsburgh and in the inner city. Keep an eye out for more from Vagabond Missions because they are planning to bring their program to Duquesne University with hopes to get students and alumni involved. This is Ashley Platt with Praxis Magazine. For volunteer and donation opportunities, you can find the link on duq.edu slash praxis to Vagabond Missions and fall in love with the neighborhoods and the kids they serve. This former Duquesne student is hitting her goals out of the park as the first female sports reporter and host on KDKA Radio. Whether it's Steeler Sunday or your morning drive to work, alumnus Shelby Cassessi is using her talents to be heard throughout the city of Pittsburgh. Shelby is the focus of this Praxis Magazine report. Shelby Cassessi, News Radio KDKA. Today, she gives you travel updates on KDKA Radio. The city of Pittsburgh announced Wednesday construction. But Shelby Cassessi is well traveled herself. The 2015 Duquesne University graduate drove 106 miles south of the bluff to pursue her journalism career in Bridgeport, West Virginia. Wasn't far off. The Mountaineers lost that game by 30 points to end And now, another 106 miles back to her home city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where she scored her goal of becoming the first female weekly sports reporter in KDKA radio history. Shelby is a former student athlete who attributes her love of sports partly to being a lifelong Penguins fan, 
especially their 2009 Stanley Cup victory, a game she watched from her living room with her father. Hugging my dad in my living room, being there in that moment, it just, I fell more in love with sports every single day, just watching through him. And dedicating their time as a busy family to analyzing each game in Pittsburgh together. The emotion surrounding sports is really irreplaceable, especially here in Pittsburgh. And I wanted to be so much closer to that than just watching from my TV. Shelby's drive and determination led her success, but she says Duquesne University and two professors in particular played an important role in her slide into home base back here in Pittsburgh. Duquesne, Mike Clark, Dr. Wojtek really helped to lay the foundation of passion that you need to succeed in this industry. The path they helped her pave paid off as she became Duquesne's first Mid-Atlantic Emmy nominee. They were so dedicated to helping us learn the ropes, get comfortable with what we were doing, and just really supporting us. In addition no to her academics and real world experience, she learned something else on her Duquesne University journey. She says she learned to always treat people with kindness and to never forget where she came from. You can listen to Shelby on KDKA Radio's 93.7 The Fan every Sunday, weekdays for your news and traffic updates. And you can also follow Shelby on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Shelby Cassessi. March 2nd is Ash Wednesday, and the Spiritan Campus Ministry is offering, offering several times and locations for the distribution of ashes. To mark the official beginning of the Lenten season, in preparation for Easter, there will be masses held across campus at 7.45 a.m. and at 12 o'clock noon. There will also be a 4.30 prayer service, which will include the distribution of ashes. And there will be a 9 o'clock mass celebrated by Bishop David Zubik. All of these services will take place in the Chapel of the Holy Spirit. In addition, there will be several locations throughout campus during the day where campus ministers will conduct brief prayer services and distribute ashes. For more information on services that will be offered, visit the Spiritan Campus Ministry page on the university website. And that's going to do it for this edition of Praxis Magazine. From all of us here at Praxis Magazine, I'm Bailey Martin. Thanks for watching and have a great day.